Good morning. Today's Bible passage is about eyes, the ones in your head that help you to see the world around you and the ones in your heart that help you to know the truth about God. Imagine for a second that you live in complete darkness. You've never seen a starry night or a sunrise, a baby's smile or a majestic mountain. You've never marveled at a waterfall or been awestruck by the intricate beauty of a flower. Even worse, you've never seen the faces of your mum and dad or your siblings. Well, that's the position the man in today's story was in, because he was born blind. Jesus and his disciples saw a blind beggar. He'd been blind since he was born. The disciples asked Jesus, teacher, did this man sin or did his parents? Is that why he's blind? No one sins, said Jesus. This happened so that God's work could be shown in this man's life. Then Jesus spat on the ground, on the dirt, and made mud with his hands. He gently spread the mud on the man's eyes. Then Jesus told the man, go to the pool of Siloam and wash off the mud. As soon as the mud was gone, the man could see. Everyone was amazed. They wanted to find out more about Jesus. And some other people who found out about what had happened were the Pharisees. And they weren't happy. You see, no one had ever healed a man born blind before. They knew that the only one who could heal a man born blind was God. So to admit that Jesus healed the blind man was to admitting that he was indeed God. Maybe a way to imagine the predicament that the Pharisees were in is to imagine that you go and visit a friend one evening. You knock on the door and he shouts, oh, come in, let yourself in. But as soon as you step in the house, you notice something a bit odd. It's pitch dark. So you find your way through to the kitchen and there's your friend cooking in the dark. And you say, friend, why are you cooking in the pitch dark? And the question just tumbles out before you can stop it because your friend turns to you and says, don't you remember? I'm blind. I do everything in the dark. Well, in just the same way, our friends who don't know Jesus live in the dark. They do everything in the dark. They're not used to the light. And that's why it's so important that we don't just give them tips on how to live a better life, but we tell them about the light of God. The fact that God sent his son to die for them so that they could live in the light, so that they could have eternal life and have the wonderful experience of living in the light. And just before I go, I want to leave you with one more thought about the difference that light can make. I have a little experiment I'd like to show you that demonstrates the difference that God's light, his power can make in our lives. So I have an ordinary hard boiled egg and a glass bottle. And I would like this egg to go inside this bottle, preferably without being damaged. Um, I can't do it on my own. If I force it, it will break. However, if I introduce some light into the situation, I think it might work. Let's see, so I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna quickly pop the egg on top and see what happens, oh, almost. So that demonstrates that we can almost get the egg in the bottle um, through the use of light. Unfortunately, it did break this time. Well, after seven more failed attempts and my husband's additional trip to the supermarket, it turns out they don't sell eggs small enough for the milk bottle experiment to work in High Wycombe. Um, however, the point remains the same. Just as when we add fire to the bottle, the egg is able to go in. When God is in our lives, the impossible is able to happen. He does impossible things through his power. People who are blind are healed and people who live in darkness have their eyes opened to the truth of who God is and their lives are transformed.